All right, so today I want to show you 20 of the coolest ball pythons that I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, I went over to Morph Market, and believe it or not, there's actually been over 125,000 ball pythons that have been listed on Morph Market. And today what I did is I went through hundreds and hundreds of different ball pythons, looking for some that are really impressive that I've never actually seen before. And you know, with all the hundreds of base mutations, you can virtually make an unlimited amount of combinations year after year. There's always really awesome stuff coming out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to Morph Market and I want to show you 20 of the coolest ball pythons. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on Morph Market and I want to start with this crazy snake right here. I can almost guarantee you have never seen a ball python that looks anything even close to this. As a matter of fact, this is a multi-gene animal. This is the Orange Dream, Yellow Belly, Black Pastel, Banana, Calico. has quite a few genes working in it. And at first glance, you could definitely see it kind of has the orange color from a banana. And you know, usually if you, if you mix in like an Orange Dream and yellow belly normally what you get is a really bright yellow snake which is kind of interesting you actually mix it that with the black pastel and the banana it kind of cancels out the yellow turns it into this orange kind of a weird color snake almost looks like a highway or a freeway with a dotted line right down the back and then the calico usually brings up the white on the sides it's really interesting combo <laughs> i have never seen anything quite like this pretty amazing snake Here's another one that I thought was really amazing and you've probably heard of the super gravel or the super asphalt and the thing I really like is the super gravel mixed with the pastel makes for a really awesome snake. Almost looks like a highway or a freeway with the pastel mixed in. I've seen some that are pretty close to this and I would say just a really simple combination like this is probably one of the most impressive combos that I've seen over here on Morph Market. Here's another one that's kind of interesting. And if you take a look at this one, I've never seen anything. As a matter of fact, if someone actually handed me this snake, I probably even couldn't guess one gene in this snake. That thing is so crazy looking. This actually happens to be a firefly, yellow belly, leopard, and spot nose. And this is actually head clown. You really can't see any influence from the head clown. The leopard's kind of interesting because the leopard is usually, it's, it's one of the best morphs. We can mix it with a lot of different genes and really kind to get an explosion of the pattern and that's kind of what I'm thinking a lot of this broken up pattern comes from you mix that with the spot nose and it's probably what's really bringing up a lot of the crazy pattern on this one and this actually is this, this actually says it's a possible super leopard so it could actually be influencing the pattern that way if you actually take a look at the genetics on this one this is actually the leopard pastel spot nose yellow belly and fire so the firefly is actually the pastel and the fire which is kind of an interesting mix Here's another one that is kind of surprising to me. As a matter of fact, this is actually a super banana clown. It almost looks just like a super banana, but for some reason when you add the clown on top, it doesn't really change the pattern that much, but it almost looks like it's just glowing, like it's on fire. This is a really crazy snake, really awesome looking. A super banana clown, pretty awesome. Here's another combo that I thought was, was pretty impressive just for a couple genes. This is actually a puzzle with the Mojave on top of it. I can't say I've actually seen a puzzle Mojave. Makes for a really awesome combo. And the puzzle is actually a recessive mutation, so you actually need two copies of the gene to actually get a visual. And then the Mojave is in the blue-eyed leucistic. The, the Mojave is probably what's giving it a lot of these little spots right here. And a lot of times with Mojave, you get these little keyhole patterns a really reduced pattern here and the puzzle makes it look really crazy on top of that pretty awesome combo Here's another one that I've never seen anything like this either. This is pretty crazy. This is actually the Super Anchi Super Stripe Hidden Gene Woma. And keep in mind, the Super Stripe is actually a yellow belly complex. It's actually a yellow belly specter for the Super Stripe. And usually with the Super Stripe, you have a stripe that comes right down the top. And then the Super Anchi really reduces the pattern. The yellow belly brings out a lot of the yellow. And then the Hidden Gene Woma kind of adds to the kind of the breakup of the pattern still keeps the stripe though with the hidden genoma which is kind of interesting really awesome combo 
Here's another one that almost looks like it came from the fabric of my couch or something like that. Really awesome combo. This actually is the Fire Red Stripe Yellow Belly. And I haven't actually done a lot of stuff with the Red Stripe. I have to look into that. Maybe I'll do a morph video on the Red Stripe, but it definitely has an effect here with the Yellow Belly and the Fire. It makes for an impressive combo. Here's another one that I thought was kind of interesting, the Rainbow Inchy Ghost. And the Rainbow is actually a recessive mutation. Not a lot of people working with the Rainbow, and it's keeping the prices pretty high because there's not a lot of people into it, so the prices usually stay pretty high if it's, if it's a really awesome morph and there's not it's not really popular. The Enchi kind of reduces the pattern, and the Ghost almost kind of fades out the snakes where it almost looks like it's in shed sometimes. And if you actually look at some of the genetics on this, it'd be really hard to hit because the rainbow and the ghost are both recessive. So essentially what you'd have to do is you'd have to breed like a rainbow to an inchy ghost or something like that. And then you'd actually have to breed the heads together. Pretty tough odds to actually hit the rainbow inchy ghost. Here's another one that's pretty cool. This is the Super Vanilla Puzzle. So it's actually a super and then a recessive at the same time. <laughs> Thanks for a really crazy looking snake. I really love the puzzles. And the, the problem is with the puzzles, it's really expensive to get into the puzzles. This one actually sold for $8,500. That's one thing I really have my eye on is the puzzles, but I, to actually get into the project's pretty tough. And to actually make a super on top of a puzzle is almost as hard as a double recessive so it's kind of tough to actually hit it. Here's another one that I thought was really interesting. This is the Orange Dream Fire Leopard Clown. And it almost throws you off because normally on your clowns you have really crazy head stamps. And it's almost like the head stamp is completely gone from this one. The Orange Dream usually brings out the orange depending on what line of Orange Dream you have, more or less orange. And then the fire really enhances the orange and really cleans up the snake. And then the leopard just kind of makes the pattern really explode. Really awesome combo. Here's another one that caught my attention. This is actually the Banana Enchi Pastel Clown. I actually bought into the a project where I actually have a Banana Enchi Clown male, which is pretty cool. This is actually adding the pastel on top of that. So essentially what the pastel does is it lightens the pattern all through the snake. So it's kind of an interesting combo because if you actually have a Banana Clown, it almost seems like, you know, with the banana as it ages, a lot of times you get little freckles but a lot of times when you mix the banana with the clown it kind of cancels out all the little freckles that you can expect when the, the snake ages because you know usually the banana has the little freckles in it and then you add the enchi the enchi really reduces the pattern up on top and then the pastel just kind of fades it out really awesome combo Here's another one that was kind of expected, unexpected. As a matter of fact, when I first looked at this, I thought there was some kind of a dark morph in here. And come to find out, this is just a leopard, pastel, and banana. It almost looks like it has mahogany or something in it because the background is really dark. You really wouldn't would expect something like this to have such a dark background. I thought it was kind of interesting. So the leopard breaks up the pattern. The pastel brings out a lot of the yellow color. And then the banana really kind of you can almost see the banana and it's kind of interesting that the other two genes almost completely wipe out the banana in this case and so maybe it's the the combination of three that's really making the banana a lot darker and then the lighter head that's usually from pastel or super pastel i've seen a lot of super pastels with a really light head Here's one that's pretty crazy. <laughs> this snake is just kind of blew me away when I saw it. I've never really seen anything like this. It almost looks like it's metallic. I've actually made a few morphs that almost look like metal, and this almost looks kind of like it has kind of the same, almost a metallic iridescent to it. This is actually the Superfly Puzzle, another puzzle combination. And the Superfly is actually a super pastel with the fire. So we're, those, uh, it's the kind of the slang for the super pastel fire is super fly. You mix it in with the puzzle and it seems like the more I'm looking at puzzles the more I really want to get into that project. It is pretty awesome. 
Here's another one that I would say is probably even more difficult to hit than a double recessive or a recessive and a super. This is actually the freeway genetic stripe. The genetic stripe is a recessive mutation and the freeway is actually allelic. So if you actually took this snake, you bred it to another one, you couldn't reproduce it unless it actually had asphalt or yellow belly in the mix. So, so the yellow belly and asphalt coming together make the freeways and if you actually substitute the asphalt with a gravel you get the highways pretty awesome pretty awesome combos I'd like to get into that project someday too then the genetic stripe is recessive so I would say trying to hit this combo would be extremely difficult you have to really breed the right snakes together to get this awesome combo Here's another one that just really blew me away. As a matter of fact, this actually has what, what they're calling white lace, which they're actually listing here on Morph Market here as a super lace. I'm not really familiar with the lace gene either, which is kind of interesting, but let me tell you, yellow belly and pastel, when you mix them together, it looks nothing like this. Yeah, the, the super lace is definitely making this whole snake just really explode like I've never seen anything before. This is really amazing. Just the pattern along the side, and then it kind of goes into almost alien heads up on the top it almost looks like it has uh like a like almost het pied markers coming up the the sides it's really interesting combo that is a really awesome snake as a matter of fact this one is still for sale three thousand five hundred dollars a little bit out of my price range but uh, that's uh probably one of the best combos i've ever seen Here's another one that was really expected too. I've never actually seen anything like this. It's kind of an interesting combo. This is a pastel lesser leopard hurricane and the hurricane I haven't worked with either. And you know, you can actually go back and compare it to the individual genes and the combos and actually see the influence of the hurricane. That's probably what I'll do in some of these future more videos is kind of show you the impact of some of the ones like the hurricane and the lace and stuff like that that I haven't really worked with. It's always interesting to do the more videos because then you can see the the genes without that morph and then with that morph added in but let me tell you i've never really seen anything like this this is a really awesome combo Here's another one. This is the Confusion Leopard Butter. And the, the interesting thing about this is usually the Confusion is similar to the Leopard where it really explodes the pattern. And usually if you mix the Confusion with the Leopard, you almost get like a freckling all over the snake. Like it just shatters it almost into little freckles of a pattern. And then the funny thing is when you add the Butter and the Enchi on top of that, it seems like what it's doing is it's actually putting all the pattern back together and reducing it and giving it this really interesting snake. It's the first time I've really seen this combo of genes in a snake. Here's another one that kind of blew me away. This is the Black Pastel Confusion Pinstripe Banana. A lot of genes at work in this one. And at first glance, you can almost see the, the orange color from the banana. And usually with the confusion, it just kind of explodes the pattern almost like, it's almost like leopard on steroids where it really just explodes the pattern. And then the Black Pastel, usually that's a dark morph. So essentially what that does is it usually gives you a dark background, which we're not really seeing in this and then the pinstripe on top of it usually the pinstripe is really visually dominant and I can't even hardly see the pinstripe in this I thought it was interesting that it had all those genes kind of clashing together to make this really interesting looking snake Here's another one that I thought was really cool. This is the GHI Mojave Clown. I've actually seen the GHI Clowns. They come out almost like a, a broken up pattern that is almost like a metallic silver, which is really awesome. Then you add the Mojave on top of that, and it seems like it's really lightening all the colors with the Mojave, giving it more of this yellow and more of a whiter background with the Mojave mixed in. Really awesome combo. So here's the last one I wanted to show you. You may have seen this one before. I just wanted to throw this in at the end. It's one of my most, the, one of my favorite combos here on Morph Market. This is actually the Super Orange Dream Yellow Belly Pied. And the Pied gives you these splotches of white. And the Super Orange Dream is probably the, the combo. If you have the right line of Super Orange Dream, you can get some really bright, intense oranges like nothing you've ever seen before. And then usually when you mix Yellow Belly on top of like a Super 
super orange dream or a fire or pastel you really bring out the intensity and the colors of the yellows and the oranges and the super orange dream and yellow belly mixed together with the pie mix in this almost looks like this kind of reminds me of like a japanese koi fish kind of how uh, it's just so intense and you get the almost the lines like the the japanese koi it's kind of interesting how this snake really pops probably one of my favorite combos as far as pies all right, so it is time for the question of the day. And his master's voice 418 asks, what is the best age of a ball python to buy? And that is a very good question. You can buy ball pythons all the way from hatchling size all the way to adult size. And it really depends what you're going after. So if you're actually looking at a really high-end multi-gene ball python, kind of like what I'm showing here in my videos, a lot of times you don't really have a choice. You pretty much get what you get. A lot of times you'll find one ball python and there won't be any other ball python like that. Or if you do, sometimes you're waiting for a long time. As a matter of fact, uh, I saw a pinstripe pied ball python and actually when I bought mine there I was looking for about two years for another one to actually come up on morph market and I just couldn't find one and finally when one popped up I was like doesn't matter what age it is I'm definitely taking that ball python and then sometimes if you're going after like a pastel or maybe like a bamboo like Bobby here you know you have a lot of choices sometimes there's a lot of them out there and you do have a choice from the age you know all the way from a hatchling to an adult and I would say if if you're just starting out in ball pythons, if you actually bought a hatchling that is right out of the egg, it's a little bit more difficult to feed. Sometimes, unless you have a supply of live mouse hoppers, you won't actually be able to get that ball python to feed, which can be really stressful, especially if you're a new keeper. And for me, breeding ball pythons, it doesn't really matter because I have live mice here and I'm all set up. It doesn't matter if, you know, I'm used to ball pythons coming right out of the egg, so I have the whole setup and the experience. And then they kind of go through a transition where ball pythons will kind of go into this hatchling stage where they'll just bite everything like crazy and I'd say for a new person it can be a little bit intimidating when you're going in for the ball python trying to pick it up and it's actually trying to snap at you and bite you and I'd say it's it's kind of a phase they go through when they when they go through the kind of growing out of the initial stage into where they start eating they get a little bit confused and then they kind of finally get out of that stage and go into a more hatchling handleable stage. It's kind of where my ball python hatchlings are that I'm selling right now. They're a little bit bigger and they still haven't reached the thousand gram wall. So it's pretty much the perfect time to buy ball pythons. But if you actually get to the point where they get 800 to a thousand grams, you know, a lot of them will actually go off of food for a long time, which can stress out, you know, new owners that aren't used to ball pythons fasting for a long time. And another thing you have to watch, especially with adults, is what they're eating. Sometimes a ball python can get stuck on live rats or even worse live mice I have a spider female that will only eat live mice and let me tell you she's a really picky eater and she only eats live mice it's almost impossible to get the weight back on her again she actually bred a couple years ago and I just can't get her back up to size to breed again I don't know if I'll ever get that snake to breed but you really have to watch especially if you're buying adults what are they eating and do you actually have that type of food like a live rat to, to offer your ball python. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.